Well, let's talk now to uh, Ryan Peterson, CEO of Flexport, uh, a supply chain logistics company. Um, welcome to the program, Ryan. How many containers um, from your company are caught up in this? Just give us a, a rough idea. Uh, tens of thousands of containers have been diverted around the Red Sea, the traditional route between Asia and Europe, and are now going around the southern tip of Africa. So it's been quite a chaotic mess for our customers. And w what are your contacts also telling you? Is it, this isn't just you. Well, no, clearly not. You've got um, o over 7 million containers so far have been diverted. Um, so it's a, you know, pretty, substantially 90 to 95 percent of all the container ships that traditionally transit the Suez are taking the long route around Africa in order, in order to avoid these attacks by Houthi, Houthi missiles. And we were just saying that it's uh, Germany's uh, chemical sector which is feeling the hit just at the moment. But in your experience, which sectors of uh, global trade are being most affected? Yeah, well, it's actually even more so than the container. Uh, the chemical segment is going to be anything shipped by container. So that's um, kind of manufacturing sectors. You saw both Volvo and Tesla announced they had to stop their lines in Germany. Um, many other manufacturers are going to feel this as the parts don't arrive from Asia. And then finished goods, sort of all the things that you're used to buying in the stores, department stores, et cetera, are going to be delayed and much more expensive. The, the price of ocean freight has gone from Asia to Europe has increased by about 5x. That's going to make Chinese manufacturers' goods more expensive for everybody in Europe. Um, it's actually impacting freight to the United States as well. Uh, the price of freight from Asia to the U.S. has gone up 3 to 5x uh, during over the last 30 days. So it's a really big impact to any business trying to do business globally. The unlikely fix for all of this, of course, is um, peace breaking out in the Middle East, which doesn't look if, as if it's going to happen anytime soon. So for businesses in the real world, what are the solutions now? Well, I think for the moment, it's probably wait and see for the next few weeks. Uh, of course, we have the Chinese New Year holiday on February the 10th. This is a big peak shipping season. The, the couple of weeks leading up to that holiday when China manufacturing sector goes on break, every year that's a big peak shipping season as companies try to ship out as many goods as they can before the holiday. So once folks come back to work after the Chinese New Year holiday, I think we'll have a much better picture of what's the real level of a demand for shipping relative to the supply. Uh, routing around the southern tip of Africa has really reduced the supply of shipping capacity because it takes longer, it takes more ships, therefore reduces the supply. Um, whereas it, right now we have a peak surge in demand, so it's kind of a perfect storm. We'll find out in a, in a month or so where, where the prices settle and what this will really mean for businesses over the coming year. As you know better than most, the international uh, shipping business and the container business is uh, incredibly complex. I mean, just away from the Red Sea in this crisis, what will this look like in a few weeks' time for factories, businesses, and those of us just going shopping? Yeah, I mean, you're going to see uh, more harder to find goods, uh, more stockouts. Uh, prices probably take a little bit longer to adapt, but, uh, but if this lasts longer, you'll see higher prices for goods. But it's going to be more about the lack of availability of product because a lot of these companies are running relatively just-in-time supply chains. So if you suddenly have a delay of 10, 12 days, there's a lot of complex coordination going um, in order to get these products delivered onto the shelves where you can buy them. So I think you, you may see that some of the products you'd like to buy are out of stock. Big businesses are often able to more easily take a hit on trouble, but what about smaller businesses around the world? Yeah, I mean, it definitely can affect both. Um, bigger businesses sometimes have a little bit more negotiating power and leverage. Um, what you're seeing right now is there's just not enough capacity on the ships to move the cargo out, um, at, at all the cargo. And so you may see that big businesses are able to kind of sit down with the sea levels of these major ocean carriers and make a deal and say, hey, move our cargo. And they, they, ha they do have just naturally by the, the nature of business have a little bit more negotiating power than a small business. But that's something that we pride ourselves at at Flexport, where it's helping small business manage to get cargo moved, put it on a ship, get it delivered anywhere in the world. So there are solutions out there for small companies as well. Ryan, we'll no doubt talk again in coming weeks uh, for the moment. Thank you very much for that. Ryan Peterson, CEO of Flexport.